now we are going to study about the topic latent heat we already discussed the change of state from solid to vapor by adding heat energy now we are going to discuss the latent heat absorbed by the system in the case of change of state look at the graph here the graph is showing about in x axis it is showing heat absorbed in calorie per gram and in y axis it is the temperature in degree celsius we are having an ice about minus 10 degree celsius and we are applying heat energy to the system on applying heat energy we can say that the temperature of the ice increases up to the temperature 0 degree celsius and then onwards there is no increase in temperature but there is a constant temperature and while there is an absorption of heat energy the amount of heat energy absorbed is utilized for the change of state or it is given for phase change here the phase is from solid to liquid or it is from ice to water the amount of heat energy required to change the phase from solid to liquid is termed as latent heat of fusion the here the ice is turned into water by absorbing about 80 calorie per gram that amount of energy is termed as the latent heat of fusion after absorbing the latent heat of fusion the ice will be in a state it is melt completely into liquid and then onwards the heat absorbed is utilized for the increase in temperature as we know that if the the heat absorbed is utilized for increase in temperature the graph will go straight up to the point 0 100 degree celsius we know that 100 degree celsius is the boiling point of water and in the graph we can say that after attaining 100 degree celsius there is no increase in temperature on adding heat but there is an increase of amount absorbing amount of heat energy up to a certain level and after converting the amount of water into vapor that is after attaining the liquid phase to vapor phase the amount of energy absorbed by the system is about 540 calorie per gram that amount of energy applies to for change of state from liquid to vapor is termed as latent heat of vaporization that is we are having two types of latent heat they are latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization now we are going to express latent heat in an equation form that is if m of m mass of a substance undergoes from one state to another the quantity of heat required is given by the amount of heat energy absorbed by the system of mass m is given by q is equal to ml or l is equal to q by m this is the equation for latent heat here l is known as latent heat and is a characteristic of the substance the si unit the si unit of l is joule per kilogram joule per kilogram the value of l also depends on the pressure its value is usually quoted as standard atmospheric pressure the latent heat for a solid state change is called latent heat of fusion it is represented by l f and for a liquid gas state change it is called latent heat of vaporization represented by the letter lv 
these are often referred to as heat of fusion and heat of vaporization consider the table given it is the table showing temperature of exchange of state and a latent heat of four various substances at one atmospheric pressure and consider the case of water the melting point of water is 0 degree celsius at 0 degree celsius the amount of energy required to required for the change of state is about 3.33 into 10 raised to 5 joule per kilogram and in the case of boiling point it is 100 degree celsius and the amount of heat energy absorbed by the system is about 22.6 joule per kilogram it means that to melt 1 kilogram of ice we need 3.33 into 10 raised to 5 joule per kilogram and it is for 1 kilogram of water we need 22.6 into 10 raised to 5 joule per kilogram so steam at 100 degree celsius carries this much amount of energy this is why burns from heat are usually more serious than those from boiling water next we are going to discuss about sublimation we already know that there are three states of matter they are solid liquid and gas by giving energy to the solid the solid state will change to liquid and if then we are giving energy this changes to gaseous state and it can return to liquid and solid state by giving energy to the surroundings okay this is the state of change that is now we are going to discuss the direct conversion of solid to gas without going to the liquid phase consider the figure it is a case of dry ice dry ice is the solid carbon dioxide solid carbon dioxide is called dry ice it is a substance which can transform solid directly to gas without going to liquid phase that process is called sublimation the process in which the solid directly changes to gas without going to the liquid phase is known as sublimation and the conversion is called sublime that sublime is called the substance which said to be sublime another example is known is for camphor iodine etc are example for sublimation the change from solid state to vapor state without passing through the liquid state is called sublimation and the substance is said to sublime during the sublimation process both the solid and vapor state of the substance coexist in thermal equilibrium here the solid and gaseous state coexist in thermal equilibrium this process is called sublimation the next topic is about heat transfer heat transfer is the transfer of heat energy from one body to the other body because of the temperature difference consider the figure 1 in the figure we are having two object one object is warmer and one object is cooler the warm object is at a higher temperature and the cooler object is at a low temperature in the thermometer we are having this up to this level and the cooler body is having a low temperature value so there exist a temperature difference between these two bodies so there is a chance of heat transfer from one object to the cooler object that is that the flow is in this direction 
because it is the higher temperature is the lower temperature heat transfer from higher temperature to lower temperature that is there are three types of heat transfer there are three types of heat transfer the first one is conduction the second is convection and the third one is radiation in the second figure we are having all these process in one figure that is the conduction is from the handle of the vessel and convection occurs inside the vessel that is the actual movement of the water and radiation is from the hot region to the surrounding we are we are going to discuss all these in detail first of all consider the case of conduction the conduction is the mechanism of transfer of heat between two adjacent parts of a body the conduction is mainly occur from one part of a body to the other part of the body consider the figure consider a rod of length l a rod of length l and area of cross section a it is kept in a in such way that it is insulated from the surrounding it is surrounding this is surrounding the here is the, here is the system and this portion is the insulation and the tz is at a higher temperature and td is at a lower temperature and we know the metal are of good conductor so the heat is transfer between this to this direction that is from higher temperature to lower temperature suppose one end of the metallic rod is put in this in this temperature and other is at a lower temperature this is the higher temperature this is the lower temperature now we are going to quantitatively express the conduction of heat from a system to when a body to another body that is it is given as the rate of flow of heat h is directly proportional to the area of cross section here a is the area of cross section and it is directly proportional to the temperature difference tc is the higher temperature td is the lower temperature and h is directly proportional to temperature difference and it is inversely proportional to the length of the conductor and combining these we get h is equal to h directly proportional to a tc minus td divided by l so h is equal to ka tc minus td divided by l the constant of proportionality the constant of proportionality k is called the thermal conductivity and from this equation we can write the unit of thermal conductivity as from this equation it is the joule per second and area is in meter square and temperature in kelvin it is in meter and we are cutting this we are having the value of k that is the unit of k is joule second inverse meter inverse and kelvin inverse that is the the unit of thermal conduct now we are going to discuss some of the application of conduction of heat before that consider the table in the first column we have different types of materials they are categorized into three they are metals non metals and gases and in the second column their respective thermal conductivity is given and we can say that the metal having highest value of 
thermal conductivity values and the gas is having the least value of thermal conductivity. The thermal conductivity of non-metal is in between the gases and metals. Because of this property, we can use the materials for different applications in our daily life. Consider the first application that, uh, that is the cooking pot have copper coating on the bottom. We can see that the copper has the highest value of the thermal conductivity. So because of that the pot cooking vessels the pot is having copper coating at the base at the bottom of the pan or pot because of this or because of the high value of thermal conductivity the copper distribute heat uniformly the copper coating under the pan or below the bot at the bottom of the pan distribute the heat applied to the pan dist evenly or uniformly all over the area of the bottom because of this the uh, the food material inside the pan gets enough heat energy and it will cooked this is the first example for the second example we can see that the houses of concrete roof get very hot during the summer days we can say that considering the non metals concrete have some of the highest values of thermal conductivity considering the non metal case because of this it can conduct more heat than other other materials so on summer days the inside of the building gets much hot from the surroundings because of this we prefer the an extra coating of earth or mud or clay over the ceiling of concrete roof in order to resist the the conductivity or in order to resist the heat transfer from the upper layer to the lower layer of the concrete it is one of the uses of thermal conductivity of material and for the third case that is the handle of cooking pots are made up of plastic mainly of thermosetic plastic because of this we the hand we hold the hot pan will we will not get heat from the pan because thermal conductivity of plastic the plastic do not conduct heat from the hot pan to our hands this is one of the application of thermal conductivity and most importantly the fourth one is the cooling system in nuclear power plant we know that in the nuclear power plants there is an immense amount of energy producing every second if we cannot control that much of heat energy in the nuclear power plant it gets worst and may lead to serious problems so cooling system is needed for the a nuclear power plant to conduct heat energy from the core of the power plant to the surrounding that the, thereby they, they get a uniform value of temperature inside the nuclear power plant and it it is maintained for regular working that that is this is some of the applications of thermal conductivity that we use in our day to day life moving on to the next type of heat transfer the second type of heat transfer is called convection convection is a mode of heat transfer by actual motion of matter it is the heat transfer by actual motion of matter it is only possible in fluid only possible in fluid we know that fluid composed of liquid and gas fluid composed of liquid and gas now there are two types of convection 
convection can be divided into two types. The first one is natural convection and the other one is forced convection. In natural convection, gravity plays the central role. That means the actual motion of matter is due to the gravitational force. Consider the figure. In the figure, we are seeing a hot vessel containing water which is boiling and we can see that when heat is applied at the bottom, the molecules or the matter at the bottom acquires energy and the hot region expands. And so, the density of the hot region decreases and because of the buoyancy, it rises up. It rises up and the colder part or colder region replace the position of the hot part. This is the actual motion of matter. Thereby, the heat at the bottom is transferred to the top by means of convection. Here, gravity plays the major role. And we know that here, the bulk transport of different parts of fluid. Bulk transport of different parts of fluid is taken place here. This is one of the example of natural convection. And then moving on to the forced type convection. In forced convection, the force is by physical means. Here, the matter transport is by means of physical, for example, by pumps. Example of forced convection is human circulatory system. Human circulatory system. We know that human circulatory system consists of the fluid blood. The blood we transport from top to bottom by means of we know that the pump called heart. The pump there is our heart. Heart pump the blood throughout the body thereby attaining a uniform temperature all over the body. Then the next example for forced type is the cooling system of automobile engine. We already discussed about the radiators and etc. in earlier classes. It is one of the example for convection by force. And also another example is forced air heating in home. Forced air heating in home. This is also an example for forced type and we already mentioned the heart act as a pump that circulate blood through different parts of the body transferring heat by forced convection and maintaining it as a, at a uniform temperature. So these are, these are the examples of convection and convection is defined as the mode of heat transfer by actual motion of matter. This is the definition for convection. Next, we are going to discuss about land breeze and sea breeze. It is an example for natural convection. Sea breeze and land breeze are example of natural convection. Look at the figure. During day, the ground, here it is a ground and this is the sea. During daytime, the ground heat up more quickly than water and in the sea 
because of the higher value of specific heat capacity of water. We know that water has the higher value of heat capacity, so it takes more time to increase the temperature from normal atmospheric temperature to a higher atmospheric temperature because of the high value of specific heat capacity. High value of specific heat capacity. Because of this, it takes more time to heat up the surface of the water. But at the ground, the it heat up more quickly than water and it means maintain at a high temperature than that of the sea, sea water. So the air in contact with the air in contact with the ground is heated by conduction. It is heated by conduction because the sand in the beaches are in contact with the air and the air absorbs heat from the warm sand and then the air expands and thereby the density decreases and it goes to the upper layer. So there is a vacuum created here. After the expansion here it is a vacuum created here and so the cooler air, it's the cooler air at the surface of the water forced to, it is forced to come into the ground and becoming less dense than the surrounding cooler air. As a result, the warm air rises and it forms a current. It forms a current and the cooler air here it forms a wind. So the warm air rises and the other air that is cooler air fill the space creating a sea breeze. The wind that blow from water to the ground is called sea breeze is called sea breeze near a large body of water. Cooler air descends and there is a thermal convection cycle is set up which transfers heat away from the land. This process continues. This process continues and as a result the cycle reversed. That is in the daytime the Beaches get, beaches get cool air wind, cool air wind or cool wind that is called sea breeze, it is called sea breeze. But at the night the case reverses because during the daytime the water absorbs heat energy from morning to evening and at the evening the water become warm at the sea and when sun goes at instant the ground become cool the ground become cool and the warm air above the sea will expand and move to the beach area or the ground and the and if to fill the gap here the wind or the air the cooler air from the ground will reach us here and this and this wind this is the wind this wind here is called land breeze it's called land breeze the cycle continues this is the this is an example of natural convection. Next, we are going to discuss about trade wind. Trade wind is also an example of natural convection. Trade wind can be defined as 
steady surface wind on the earth flowing in from northeast towards the equator it is a steady it is a steady surface it is a steady surface wind on the earth blowing in from northeast northeast towards equator it is a definition for trade wind trade wind is arising due to the natural convection look at the figure we know that this is the north this is the east this is the south this is the west and we know that the equator this is the equator portion we know that the equatorial and the polar region of the earth receive unequal solar heat now the, the more air heat energy is on the equator equator get the more heat energy and poles get almost less amount of heat energy so air at the earth surface near the equator is hot here it is hot region and this is the cold region this is the cold region while the air on the upper atmosphere of the polar is cool a convection current is set up here we know that air moves from hot region to cold region this here a convection current is set up with air at the equatorial surface rising here the air rises and moving out towards the pole it it goes towards the pole first of all it goes towards the it goes towards the pole at the pole the descending and streaming inwards the equator so here air gap is here thereby the current from the cooler air from the north is blowing towards the equator also the rotation of the earth modifies this convection current air close to the equator has an eastward speed of about 1600 km per hour the trade that this is the velocity of trade wind because of the rotation of the earth while it is zero at the north pole and the south pole as a result the air descends not at the poles but at 30 degree this 30 degree north this is at 30 degree south the phenomenon is occurring in this region because of the rotation of the earth the this phenomenon is seen at the northern and the southern pole at a 30 degree respectively latitude this is the latitude latitude and this phenomenon is called trade wind this is an example of natural convection